Hello, and welcome back to Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I'm Dr. Abstract. Uh, we've done a bunch of tutorials showing us what we can make with Zim inside of Adobe Animate. Zim is a JavaScript Canvas framework to code creativity. It's built on CreateJS, and Adobe Animate exports to CreateJS in web, in web mode. So uh, that's how all this works. There is a shim that we can bring in, and some of the earlier first two um, first two tutorials showed us how to work with that and how to zimify um, Adobe Animate content, such as a movie clip. But we have a lot of content that we can add from Zim that just works in Zim. You don't have to zimify it because it's already Zim. So we've been showing you these in the last bunch. Let's uh, see what we made last time. And we had some wiggling letters. These were, uh, we were using wiggle. We could also use animate on this to animate a label letters, which turns a label into a bunch of letters to operate on specifically. Before that, I think we did a puzzle. We did a book. Oh, we did some you know, swiping from page to page. Uh, we showed some tabs and arrows, etc., and on and on and on. So we've got a bunch of things that we can show you that make more things in Adobe Animate. All right, let's uh, copy the last one. I'm still without internet, so uh, so be it. I, I've done a series of these just recently. Um, we want to make a, nope, we want to copy. So save as, and we'll call this number 16. And let's this time show you a pain. Oh yeah, why not? We are in pain because yeah, we don't have internet. Um, we've done a bunch of these tutorials of late without internet, nothing else to do. <laughs> Um, we're getting internet tomorrow night, so I can't go out and show you around at the moment, but uh, if you've seen earlier tutorials, you've uh, seen around. Okay, so we've made a new one there, F9. We made a copy of the last one with the wiggling letters, but we'll get rid of the wiggling letters. And this is number 16, and we will call it pain. Um, to start game, to start app. <laughs> Uh, and sound. So one thing is you're not supposed to play sound unless the user interacts. And so this is a good way to start your app uh, if you have some sound, such as even a backing sound for your game or for your feature. Uh, but you need the user to do something. So this is like a pop-up window we're going to show you that says, hey, start game. And when you press it, that's interacting. And then you can start the music or the, the, the sound. Okay, so... That would look like this, a uh, new pane. And we can give it a dimension, something like 300 comma 300, and a word, hello, or start game, or whatever it may be. And then we dot show the pane. You can center the pane too, and it works out all right, but show's got an extra thing in here that we'll use later. A few of the components, like the color picker and the pane, have a show method that uh, sort of does a bunch of stuff for us. Uh, okay, well, let's just see it. So we save that up and control enter. There is the pane showing. And you'll note when we close it, we can close it by clicking off it or even on it. Uh, we can set that up in the parameters to make it close if we only if we press off. We can make it close only if we press on. We can make it not close if we press anywhere and then we have to manually close it um, or, or whatever code. Uh, add some buttons or something to, to close it. Um, and we can make it, the pane draggable. Right now it isn't. If I press anywhere, it goes away. And note that it's darker. So that's one thing the, the pane does is it darkens the background. You can set how much it darkens the background too. And um, there it is closed. So the show is kind of cool because it's got a callback right in here that we can run. That's a function that will run when it closes. So that's uh, handy. Otherwise, you could use a close event. So uh, whatever this pane is, dot on, close, call this arrow function. But if we put the arrow function right in here, then that is, this is what will be run when we close that pane. So that's where we would play our sound. Um, let's just play around with the pane a little bit. Why don't we make it the stage width? And we'll make it, um, I don't know, 150. And instead of hello, we will say start game. And we'll make it yellow, yellow. Okay, let's have a look. So it almost works, but not quite, in that the corners uh, of the pane are showing. So you could either set the corner to zero, or what I do, just uh, 
drop shadow kind of comes on an angle too, so may as well make this a bit wider than the stage on both sides, such as the width plus 100. It's not where there's a zero. And then you have this, magnificent. If I knew how to change the background color, I would probably change that to a black color. It would look a little bit better, I think, with that going across, hitting, hitting black. There's bound to be some way to do that. I would have thought, or might have thought, that it'd be right here somewhere. More settings. I don't actually see it. It might be something in the HTML publishing setting. More settings here. HTML, any background color? It's like, no. Basic, any background color? Nah. So somewhere in there, I mean, it could get built into the template, I'm sure, uh, but it could have been more convenient to set. In Zim, we basically say, hey, give us a new frame. What kind of scaling do you want? What width, what height? Uh, then what color is the stage and what color is the background? Uh, so we call that the outer color. So color and outer color. Uh, but anyway, I don't know where the outer color is in Adobe Animate. I'm sure it's easy enough to put in the HTML. That's the color of the HTML page right there. Okay, so anyway, start game and it starts game. Yay! So in here we want to play a sound. Um, we may as well wait for the sound to be loaded. So what we can do is it'll probably be fast enough just saying const sound. I'm going to make a boom sound is equal to a new odd. And we have something called boom.mp3 sitting inside of a folder and the path to that, we could put it here path is equal to uh, assets. So in the assets folder, there's a boom.mp3. Do you believe me? No, we'll see if that's it. Now it's my desktop. Uh, with all this other stuff. Animate. Okay, there's all the animate stuff. Here's tutorials. There is assets and there is the boom mp3. Okay. So there we are defining the sound that will as soon as it calls it here it will load or it doesn't exactly call it like as soon as we make it it will start loading it um, so that'll automatically preload and by the time we press on the pane probably it will be ready uh, the other route to go is to preload this and that would be done with a load assets uh, in zim without adobe animate we would have a frame call and we would pass in the assets to the frame call probably if we want to use them right away Anyway, uh, we could do it load assets. No, oh, uh, it's actually a property of the frame or a method of the frame. So frame, remember we're given F for the frame, S for the stage, W for the width and height. So there we're going to go F load assets. We would then say boom.mp3. And we would then pass in the path asset slash. And if this is the only thing we're loading, then we can say frame.on uh, round brackets, quote, complete, call this arrow function. And inside the arrow function is where we would do this stuff. Okay, so this would be safer. It would mean that we know that the boom is going to be ready to play. Like if they, if the boom took a little while to load and they press the pane right away, uh, then there might not be a boom. You know, so this is making sure that our boom.mp3 is loaded over the internet when it's complete, and we can put we can put uh, in here a new waiter, for instance, as well, uh, just if we want. So that's a little dot 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 thing that happens, and when load assets is done, the waiter will be removed. So that just centers a waiter automatically if there's too much to load. If we had more to load, we could load it in an array of assets in here. We've done loading before, but anyway, those are some of the ideas. That would actually work too, but if we only have one item, we don't really need the array. I'm not going to bother with the waiter. Okay, so we're loading our sound, but we're not playing it yet. We're just loading it, and then we're assigning it, and as it assigns, it gets, well, actually, that's preloading it. Here we are assigning it. We're still not playing it, and there we are. Uh, now we get to play it. Boom dot run. 
And that will run the sound when we close the uh, when we close the pane. Right. Okay. Control Enter. Here we go. Are you ready? Oh, magnificent. I didn't hear a sound. Did you? F12. Boom dot run. Uh, it's actually play. Sorry, I was working with sprites and sprites are runs. These are plays. Okay, control enter. And I think we'll have better luck this time. Oh, did you hear that? I hope you heard it. Let's try it again. That was fun. Oh, yeah. That's quite the boom. All right, so uh, there you go. It would have worked as well if we didn't do all of the load asset stuff. Do you want to see that? So we comment. Oh, by the way, if we did the load assets, we wouldn't need the path here because we told it the path there. Um, but if we don't do the load assets, um, comment that, and we would comment this, comment that. Uh, oh, for a hotkey on the comments. Oh, I think I announced that every single time, so maybe I should stop. Anyway, so there's a path now. Here's where we're loading. If we wanted to, we could have put the path right in here. But if we did the path right in there, then, oh, that would be fine. Um, I was going to say if we needed to, yeah, if we were preloading it, we could put the path right in here too. And then when we define it, we'd have to put the path there. But okay, so that would work without the path. It's just if you had more sounds or more images or whatever, often we put them in the assets a bit easier with the path um, separated. And watch, this will work too. So here we are, and we hit start, and it plays. So that's lazy loading the sound. In other words, we didn't preload it. We just said, hey, make it. When it tries to make it, it says, oh, I haven't preloaded this yet. I'll therefore preload it. <laughs> so um, if you've got a bunch of sounds, it's probably better to preload the bunch of sounds all at once rather than sound, 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 and each one preloading themselves because that, that just... Um, does more work. Uh, calls a new preload thing every time. So usually, and in the past, we only had preloading. Uh, now we do lazy loading, but in some cases we have to preload. For instance, using a picture for a sprite, using a picture for a tile. Those are some examples of when we need to preload. And also, if we just really want to make sure that the sound is already there before we try and play it. There is, if we if we do a lazy load like this, you can ask for the complete on boom. So if boom wasn't complete, then you could, I don't know, set a timeout and try again after 0.5 seconds or something like that. But that's, you know, that becomes a little bit annoying to do. All right. So yay. Uh, there you go. What about, let's see, what else could we show here? How about, what else can this... A pain do. We we saw that it can receive the word start game, but we just added in the latest version of Zim, I go out and show you the example. In the latest version of Zim, we added some content. And uh, let's take a look at that. So I'm going into where I can get to the docs because my internet is missing. And I'm going to go Zim slash, mm, probably can do, look up the pain here. So there's pain. So we've changed now the parameter to be called content. It used to be called label. But content now works in Zim window, Zim pane, and Zim panel to provide some uh, potentially easy ways to make some content. So let me show you. <clears throat> Here is us providing some content. So a content object rather than a pane. And in this one, it looks like we're setting up for a button. So we've got a couple buttons, a cancel button and a confirm button. So if we put this into the uh, pane, it would have a cancel button and a confirm button. Any other examples? Uh, that looks good. I actually want the, does it have some information on content? Okay, so content, a header, a message, display, so the header is some stuff that would go up on top of the content. The message is the message. The display is something that goes beneath the message. So this is on top of the message. There's the message. This is the um, display. Then we have buttons. And you can have an array of buttons as well, and it will stretch them out. Um, there's one way that we could have done a text input. I guess that would be the message would have a text input in it. 
but that's what I was looking for. I was going to collect your name, for instance. And when we go boom, I'm going to make a particle emitter that uh, emits your whatever name you have typed in to the pane when we first began. Does that sound fun? All right, so that's our plan. Uh, we could have a enter button as well. And then we could make the pane so that you can't close it. So those are some things that we could do. Uh, to display close. So closes the pane if the display backing is pressed. Backdrop close. Close the pane if the backdrop is pressed. So we would want to set both those false. Display close and backdrop close to false. So in the pane here, let's adjust it to the Zim Duo technique. Uh, this is the width, will be this. I copied that stuff, which I might want. Display close. Okay, so the width is this one, comma, the height is this one, comma, the content is something else. So now we're doing something else rather than just start game. And then we can do a color of yellow as well. Uh, we've got a display close in there, comma, display close, colon, false. Do you remember the other one? Now there's also color, colon, or was it background color? Uh, I think it's background color, back, or we can put PG color too. How lazy are we? PG color, colon, yellow. Uh, display close and backdrop, back, Drop back, drop, close, <gasps> colon, false. So now it won't close. We don't have any content yet, but if I put in message here, then we can get back to where we were. I'll just put a little hello in here for now, make sure this all works. Okay, or we could have put the string hello in there, but we're getting prepared to add more to the content. Okay, does that look all right? Let's have a look. It does indeed seem to work, but now when I press on the pane itself, it doesn't close. When I press on the backdrop, it doesn't close. So we're gonna have to wait until we add something to there. We might wanna make this a little bit wider now, say 350 just until, as a matter of fact, let's, let's go to more of a square. We'll go 400 by 400. All right, so now we've got a square and we're going to prepare a little message as well as a text field and a button. Um, okay, so the message could be enter name. Uh, we don't have to put it as a message actually. We could have put it as um, a placeholder in the text input that we're going to be using. But we're going to have a text input as well, and that needs to go in the next part of this. This is going to go in the next part of our content. So we've used message and then display. So a display object for beneath the message and then some buttons. Okay, so the display object we want. Display, please. A new text input. Um, text input. Okay, uh, I'm just waffling a little bit because we're going to need, for us to um, explode what's in the text input, the, the user's, your name or whatever the user's name, then we'll want a reference to that text input. But I believe that we can ask for the panes display, which will reference the display object that we put in that. Or we could have made the text input out here with a reference like const text input equals new text input and then placed it in the display and then we would have had a reference to it. But I, I think we'll be okay. Uh, the text input, uh, I can't remember if it's an empty one, what it will look like, but we can easily see. Shall we see? So we go control enter and it looks pretty good. So enter name and then we can type our name in there. We could center that might look better or well, you know, center the text in there might look a little bit better, but it's fine for now. So enter name. There's also spacings that are available to us if we so desire uh, so that we could make that spacing a little bit bigger. 
And remember that you had something up top as well, so you could put a little picture in there and then all that stuff would get centered on here. But anyway, enter name is good enough. And now a button, hmm, comma, a button, plural, button, colon, new button. And uh, let's just see what happens. Uh, we'll do a label of uh, submit, maybe. Submit. Squiggly. So we just went directly to the label parameter of a button by uh, bypassing the width and height because we just use the default button width and height. But we could have said, I don't know, whatever, 300 comma 60 comma submit. And that would also have worked. Okay, it might be buttons. Yeah, it looks like it. Right, that came in a little bit small for us just because we haven't done too much. Like we, we did a bit of planning for this and quite often if we're collecting information and stuff, we wanna keep it fairly concise. Um, it's not the end of the world, but there is, I think you recall, uh, there was a button scale thing that we can put in there. Let's have a look. Button scale, for the scale for the buttons. And I don't know what the default is, but uh, we can, if, if we haven't got much in there, then we could have increased a button scale. And I believe, was that in the content? I think it was outside the content. So here, well, let's go check. Oh, it's in the content, but outside of the buttons. So buttons could be multiple if we want. So it's in here, makes sense. Comma. And it's funny, because this is starting to look a little bit, as soon as we're doing this kind of uh, arrangement, it's starting to look a little bit like view which does a lot of this, uh, I don't know if that's called declarative or something like that, but anyway, it's, it does a lot of this kind of stuff. And we'll make the button scale two and just see where what that brings us to. So that's, it's pretty big. Uh, let's just change it to one. I have a feeling that the button scale is, um, button scale, control enter. Yeah, okay, so that's the normal button size would have come in at that. So button scale by default is about 0.5, I think. But all right, if we want that, it looks like we could add some more space in there. One of the things that's a problem at the moment is we've made the window a little bit too high for the content that we have. So it might look better if we had just a height of 300, for instance, and tidy that up a little bit. Uh, I see, so now we're starting to say, okay, that looks better. Good enough, how about that? And I am Dr. Ab abstract but when we submit it's not closing the pane yet so we have to add some stuff on that so the button uh, we could we could I think we'd probably put an event right on it but um, that might be the way to do it button new button dot tap put there and we'll put an arrow function in the tap at which point we want to uh, we don't we don't have any show left here. We we do have a boom dot play at some point, but uh, that would be right in here now. So there's the boom dot play. Let's just see if it if the tap captures the boom dot play. We still haven't closed the window yet or the pane, and we got a little bit of a problem somewhere. Let me F12. Let's check a. Oh error message, but we're just not seeing anything. Dot tap. Oh, we didn't have a show. Dot show. So we do, do need the show still. All right, that's good. And when we submit, no F12. Uh, any error? No F12. And my tap is not working on the submit to play the, the sound. So boom dot play. Do we have a boom? We've got a boom. Button dot tap. Um, what would that be? Oh, no, that would make sense. I was going to say maybe because we've set the pane to be not closed, we've lost the ability to press, but I don't think so. Are we, are we let's check. Are we getting anything? Zog. Hello. Hell. How about hell? Hello. And control enter and tap. F12, we're not getting anything from that. So maybe it's cloning the button. 
Don't know if it would do that or not. Uh, how can we tell? Well, we can, one thing we can let's have a little read of the docs and see if it suggests a way. Buttons, an array of Zim button objects um, or configuration objects as follows. Uh, right, you can just put in squiggly brackets. You don't even have to make a button. Squiggly brackets, a label, a color, a roll color, so all that stuff, and a call. Okay, so that, in other words, there's another way to do this. <laughs> Excuse me. My apologies. Um, with the callback being the callback function for when the button is pressed. So that's probably what we want to do. Maybe that's how it was expected. I forgot about that. Um, I'm not sure why we, we don't have access to the tap on the button that we placed there. Uh, maybe it is cloning the buttons. I'm not sure if I need to. Yeah. Uh, there might have been a reason for that. So I'm looking for animate here. So instead of a new button, what we can do is say the label is submit. That'll make us a default one and comma the callback function call is what was going to be in part of here. And what's that round thing? That's the callback function, squiggly and squiggly. Okay. So what we've got then is the call is ending there, and then the squigglies here of the button thing uh -huh, is ending there. So now we should have a submit button that will play boom. So the button looks the same. Submit plays boom. Excellent. So my apologies, I forgot that there was that system in place to further make um, use these things. And what we can do is tap that in, tap that in, tap that over, tap that back. Okay, there we go. So our, but our series of buttons, is, if we only have one, we can put it in that. If we had multiple buttons, we could put it in an array and do multiple versions of these. But I think we're fine with just the submit. We've got the enter name. It's now saying boom.play, but we want to close the pane. So that would be our pane here. Uh, probably an e.target or something, but anyway, we'll just call it up here, const pane is equal to that. And then what we can say is pain.close. Okay, let's see if, oh, pain.hide, I think it is, hide. All right, and we go like this, and we submit. Great, the boom plays, and we closed it. So the final step is, though, we need to know what we entered as a name. So that would be probably just pain display dot text shall we try it so instead of zogging hello we could zog pain dot display dot text and let's see if that captures what we type in here test exclamation mark submit and we have a look at our f12 for our thing and there we've got the word test so we know what was entered in to the um, the display there. Okay, and we want to add that to an emitter, new emitter, and we will emit a new label that has pain.display.text in it. And dot center that, it'll go forever. <laughs> you think we'll want that? I doubt it. Dr. Abstract. Ready? Wow. Dr. Abstract forever. <laughs> so uh, we might want some formatting of that. Uh, usually what I do with the emitter is um, we'll drop it down here. That's annoying. And I'll drop it down like so. And this is the object that we're emitting, comma, uh, start paused, colon true. This is probably the easiest way. So we start at pause, colon true, and then we'll dot spurt, um, say 30 of them. It'd be fun to rotate that text as well and do some other things to it, but hey. Ready? Doctor 
abstract submit. Wonderful. We start our game and off we do whatever. Try that again. Ready? Hello. We submit uh, emit some submit and emit some hellos. Okay. Cool. Huh? Wow. All right. So this is all new. This stuff here, the content was created in Zim version Zim01. Well, once again, we've gone through Zim1, Zim Duo, Zim Tri, Fourth, V6, Hep, Oct, Neo10, Cat, NFT, and Zim. So we've gone through lots of major versions and many of those, lots of subversions and stuff. We've done a lot in Zim. In the last one, we decided that we would add some nice, easy way to make some content inside of a pane, a window, or a panel. And that's with this new content parameter. I don't know. You know, we used to build that stuff in just in Zim and put it in there itself. Uh, there's some shortcuts that we're doing just by saying, hey, the buttons look like this. We didn't make a new button, but in behind, you saw that it just it does that for us. So it's okay. Uh, we ran into a problem where when we made our own button in there, it seemed to have cloned it. I think that that's the case. And cloning doesn't clone the events, which means uh, the, the solution would have been to make a new button here. And then down below here, we would say uh, something like content. Dot, oh, no, it would be uh, the pain's content, pain.content. Uh, if we had multiple buttons, it's probably a buttons array. Dot buttons, I would imagine, would give us the buttons array. If it's the first button, there it is. Dot tap. Okay, and so whatever we were doing in the tap, that's what we would put there. Do you want to try that or not? Was it, uh, I think it was new button it would be here. We pass into the button the label. There is no callback. All this stuff would go inside of the tap. I'll probably back out of this in just a second. So all that stuff goes inside of the tap. Uh, the label gets a submit. And that's all we get when you get a call. All right, let's have a look. Control enter, nothing showed up, so probably a little bit of a boo-boo somewhere. Content goes from here to here. Message comma, comma, comma. Button scale one. Oh, there we go. That's wrong. We need the round brackets there. Okay. And we're back in order with our button. We go test. Uh, well, how about uh, try? <laughs> and we submit, and try happens. Well, we guessed right, okay? So what had happened there is the button is being cloned when we put it in here. There's certain reasons for that. You might want the same button in multiple panels or something like that. And if you had, if you actually use the button without cloning, what would happen is the very last panel that gets made would get the button the other ones it kept it keep moving the button along to the very last one so uh, we do clone the button which means we can't put the event right on this button because when it gets cloned it loses the event so in other words afterwards we apply the event the event to the button the tap event all right let me undo that though because that's a little bit unruly we recognize that issue and so what we did instead was provided a nice easy way to make buttons within there delete all that stuff, to make buttons within there by just using a button uh, format object and provide a callback. And that way um, we skirt that whole issue. And once again, if we had multiple buttons, we put an array around here. And then you can have this button and another button. Want to see what that would look like? So there's our array. We take this button right here and put it in there like so. So that's one button. And if we had another button, comma, like so, 
That's the second button. Oh, lost it. I lost her. I don't know if that's exactly how I would format it, but um, there's one button and a second button. Let's have a look. Control enter. And we get this. Now you start to see why we were working with smaller buttons by default. So that instead of what you're looking at now, you would get this. So by default, that looks a little bit better, doesn't it? All right, they're both submit buttons, but obviously we go into each of the buttons here and make a cancel or something like that. I don't know, cancel wouldn't do anything, but if that were a cancel, you would end up with a cancel button there. Okay, you can make it a different color, make it have a different callback and do something else. And you see how that's starting to look pretty nice for making kind of like a form that you could do. If you don't want it on a pane, then this can be a panel. Mm. Oh, that might work. No. New panel with content. Uh, you think you show a panel. Dot center. There we go. So now this is a panel. Uh, it's not draggable, but you see it's got panel. It's got a panel that looks a little bit different than the pane. Uh, you could still do the same thing here. Maybe there's no hide on the panel, so that would have to change there. And if you want it draggable, you can say draggable colon true, I think, or maybe it's just drag colon true, I can't remember. And now we've got a panel that is draggable. You can change what it says there. You can add a little X for things. So this is a panel. Uh, there's also the window, so you can make a new window and show this stuff in a window. All right, let's undo that and bring us back to the pain, though. Oh, the pain of it all. And I don't think we need two buttons in there either. Good. And are we back to our enter the name and explode? Explode this, please. Explode. Wonderful. Okay, I think we better call it a wrap on that. It was longer than I expected, but uh, we showed we went in a little bit deeper than we needed to. I was just going to show you a pane that when you closed it, it played a sound. <laughs> hey! Maybe the next one. You, you've seen this explosion. And I don't know if you caught a picture. You saw the picture of the asteroid in there? It'd be kind of nice to play, I don't know, an explosion sprite over top of an asteroid. Would you like that? Okay, have a look in the next, the next um, Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I just have to find my cursor. There it is. Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I'm Dr. Abstract. Have a good day or night, and we'll catch you later if you want. Come visit us at zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord. We'd love to hear from you. Cheers.